An example I often give is the Indus Valley civilization. Nobody actually knew that it existed until it was accidentally discovered while a railway was built. And then they found that there were these actually very, very sophisticated, very complex mud brick structures on a very large scale. Then they found that this culture had had a language, a fully developed written script. We can't read that script. The script exists, but we can't read it. The story of the Indus Valley civilization, one of the earliest cradles of urban life, reads like a mystery novel filled with climatic twists, geological turns, and the shadowy figures of invaders. As we dive deep into the annals of ancient history, this civilization's gradual fade from the vibrant urban entity, it once was around 1900 BCE, to mere remnants by 1300 BCE, has puzzled scholars and history buffs alike. Let's explore some of the intriguing theories that have emerged over the years for why this civilization suddenly vanished. Imagine living in a city where the once reliable monsoon rains start becoming erratic around 2200 BCE. This wasn't just inconvenient, it was catastrophic. The Indus Valley people, whose agricultural prowess depended on these rains, faced reduced yields and possibly famine as a result. Imagine rivers, the lifelines of your trade and agriculture, changing course due to tectonic shifts. Cities that were once bustling hubs of trade and culture could no longer sustain their populations. This wasn't just about less water for crops. Entire trade routes were disrupted, especially those with Mesopotamia, putting further strain on an already struggling economy. Now add to this scenario the threat of earthquakes. These weren't just minor tremors, but possibly significant quakes that could alter river courses, destroy sophisticated drainage systems, and turn well-planned cities into inhabitable ruins. The very foundations of urban life were literally and figuratively shaken. For a time, the theory of an invasion by nomadic Aryans gained traction, suggesting a dramatic end to the Indus Valley civilization. This theory, rooted in ancient texts like the Rig Veda, depicted a clash between the invading nomads and the settled peoples of the Indus Valley. However, the absence of clear archaeological evidence of such an invasion suggests that the civilization's decline was more a slow burn than a sudden collapse. Amidst these external pressures, internal societal and economic factors were at play. The strain of maintaining extensive urban centers, alongside depleting resources, could have led to social unrest and made these cities unsustainable. As trade with distant lands dwindled, possibly due to emerging competitors or shifts in trade routes, the economic backbone of the civilization weakened. When the British were laying down the tracks for the Indian railway system in the 19th century, they stumbled upon something extraordinary, ruins made of well-crafted bricks in the Punjab region. Little did they know, these bricks were the remnants of the Indus Valley civilization, a society that had vanished thousands of years before. At first, these ancient bricks found a new purpose under the wheels of progress, quite literally being used in railway construction. It's a bit ironic when you think about it, an ancient civilization helping to lay the foundations for modern transportation, all while its own story was buried in oblivion. Enter Alexander Cunningham in the 1870s, a man who could be seen as a detective in the realm of history. As the founder of the Archaeological Survey of India, Cunningham was among the first to take a scholarly interest in these ruins. However, even with his reports, the true significance of what they had found wasn't fully grasped. The pieces of the puzzle were there, but the picture was yet to be seen. The plot thickens with Sir John Marshall, who took the helm of the ASI in the early 20th century. Under Marshall's direction, the ASI turned its gaze to the prehistoric past, setting the stage for a discovery that would challenge the narratives of urban civilization's origins. It was Daya Ramsani who, in 1921, began excavating at Harappa, and soon after, Rakal Das Banerjee laid bare the wonders of Mohenjo-Daro. These sites revealed to the world a civilization of astonishing complexity and sophistication, with well-planned cities, advanced drainage systems, and a plethora of artifacts that spoke of a rich cultural life. The discoveries of Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro were like opening a window to an ancient world, showcasing the architectural and cultural achievements of the Indus Valley civilization. This was a society that had its unique script still undeciphered and urban planning that could rival any contemporary city today. The Great Bath of Mohenjo-Daro, with its watertight construction, hinted at a society that placed significant emphasis on cleanliness and possibly ritual purification. 
As more archaeologists joined the fray, Ernest McKay, Madho Sarup Vats, and Mortimer Wheeler, to name a few, the knowledge of this ancient civilization expanded. Each excavation across the Indus Valley region brought new insights. The narrative of the Indus Valley civilization challenged the then prevailing notion that complex urban life began solely with Mesopotamia and Egypt. Here was evidence of a parallel society that had flourished and then, for reasons still debated, declined and disappeared, leaving behind a legacy buried under the earth. Let's take a stroll back in time to explore Harappa, a city that once thrived in what's now the Punjab province of Pakistan. This ancient metropolis wasn't just any old city, it was a cornerstone of the Indus Valley civilization, bustling with life between 2600 BCE and 1900 BCE. The story of Harappa's discovery is as fascinating as the city itself. Initially spotted during the 19th century, it wasn't until the British were laying down railway tracks in the 1850s that Harappa began to reveal its secrets. Ironically, bricks from this ancient city were used in the construction of the railway, unknowingly dismantling a piece of history for the sake of progress. Fast forward to the 1920s when Sir John Marshall and his team of archaeologists took a closer look and realized Harappa was part of something much bigger. They uncovered a city so advanced it would rewrite our understanding of urban planning in ancient times. Imagine walking through streets laid out in a perfect grid, with main roads up to 30 feet wide intersecting at right angles. This wasn't a haphazard settlement. It was a city built with precision and forethought, showcasing remarkable engineering skills. Harappa's infrastructure was nothing short of revolutionary. The city boasted an advanced drainage system with covered drains along the main streets and smaller ones connecting from individual homes. This emphasis on cleanliness and public health is something many modern cities could learn from. And the buildings, all constructed with standardized baked bricks, stood as a testament to the Harappan's knowledge of materials engineering, giving the city a unified look. But Harappa wasn't just about impressive streets and sanitation. The city was alive with bustling granaries, which were central to its food storage and distribution system. These weren't just any granaries. They were massive structures located near the city's heart, hinting at a well-organized governance system that ensured the population was well-fed. Diving into the everyday lives of Harrapans, we find a society that valued comfort and cleanliness. Houses, ranging from simple dwellings to more elaborate homes, often had their own wells and bathrooms. This level of domestic luxury suggests a society where social stratification was present, but also one that placed a high importance on individual welfare. And then there are the artifacts, the seals engraved with animal figures and an undeciphered script that hint at a complex system of communication, trade, administration, or perhaps even ritual. The pottery and tools unearthed in Harappa, from utility wares to beautifully decorated pieces, reflect the diverse occupations and crafts practiced in the city, painting a picture of a vibrant, bustling community. Harappa was more than just a city, it was a beacon of urban civilization, showcasing advancements that were unparalleled for its time. Its discovery and excavation have not only provided us with a glimpse into ancient urban life, but also challenged our perceptions of ancient civilizations and their capabilities. Nestled in the Sindh province of Pakistan lies Mohenjo-Daro, a site that's not just an archaeological treasure, but a testament to the architectural genius of the Indus Valley civilization. This city, one of the most iconic remnants of ancient urban life, gives us a sneak peek into the lives of its people, their societal structure, and their unparalleled urban planning. The city was cleverly divided into two main areas, the lower city, bustling with residential and commercial life, and the Acropolis, where public and ceremonial buildings stood. This division speaks volumes about the level of organization and planning that went into Mohenjo-Daro. It wasn't just a cluster of buildings, it was a thoughtfully laid out city, designed for efficiency and order, with distinct zones dedicated to different aspects of daily life, but let's talk about the Great Bath, the crown jewel of Mohenjo-Daro. Imagine a large, watertight pool, meticulously constructed for religious purification rituals. Surrounded by corridors and rooms, the Great Bath wasn't just an architectural marvel. It was a central piece of the city's spiritual and communal life, emphasizing the importance of water not just for survival, but as a sacred element in their culture. 
The people of Mahenjo-daro were master craftsmen, their skills shining through in the intricate beadwork, finely crafted metal objects, and beautiful pottery discovered at the site. These artifacts were not merely utilitarian, they bore the marks of artistic excellence and possibly held deeper symbolic meanings for their creators. The variety and quality of these items suggest a society that valued not only function, but form and beauty, integrating them into their everyday lives. Moreover, Mahenjo-daro was a bustling economic center. The numerous seals, weights and measures found among the ruins hint at a complex economy that thrived on both local and long-distance trade. This was a city that was not isolated, it was connected, engaging in commerce with distant lands, showcasing its economic prowess and its role as a significant player in the ancient world. Mohenjo-daro, with its advanced urban planning and sophisticated architectural elements, stands as a shining example of the ingenuity of the Indus Valley civilization.